All right, so our next step now is to consider these tasks. So the first thing we gotta do is add these tasks to this request definition. So we're gonna click on fulfillment and you'll see the add fulfillment templates. These task templates have to be added here. So we're gonna click on the little plus and we're gonna select existing templates. We've already created them. So we're a step ahead here. All right, so here are our four task templates. So we're gonna select each one. We're gonna add them to this request. All right, so all four of them are added. We're gonna put them in a certain order. So we're gonna click this icon and this allows us to set the execution order. So the software hardware for provisioning, that should be number one. Same as for the provisioning software, that'll also be number one. So they can only choose one or the other, whichever one they choose will be number one. The next one will be the IT support. So these should both be number two. So basically if software is selected, this is the first one. And then this software is the second one that gets initiated. If they select hardware, same thing. The provisioning team task gets the first task, then the IT support gets the other hardware task. So let's save that. Now, as I saved it, I kind of ignored a little checkbox. And I'm gonna go back there because this is a very common pr uh, mistake that folks may not see, the ignore execution order. So although I, I, I gave it an order, I left this box checked. I don't wanna ignore this order. I need this, I need to follow this order. So I've unchecked it and I'm gonna resave it again. Let's return to the input tab. All right, so now that we have our task templates set in a certain order, we need to determine which question is gonna invoke those templates. So we have a question here that says, is this request for hardware or software? So if we scroll down, we're gonna use this question to invoke the templates. So we're gonna add a check mark in invoke templates, and we're gonna click the condition to invoke. So this screen allows us to select a template that's gonna be invoked when a certain value is selected. So when software is gonna be selected, we want the provisioning software task to be invoked and we want the IT software task to be invoked. And if the hardware value is selected, we want the hardware task for provisioning to be invoked and the IT support hardware task to be invoked. All right, so all four tasks now are set up. We'll click OK. And then we can scroll down and hit Save to save our changes. And then we can save the request itself. Now we're done with the input questions, um, the task templates, everything's all set up. So now we just need to look at the fulfillment side. And the fulfillment side is basically what we're gonna map, what, what answers are we gonna map where, all right? The, the first part is the fulfillment templates. We've already taken care of these templates. This is where we were earlier when we put the templates in a certain order. And this has already been taken care of. So let's scroll down to this section. Now here's where we'll do the mapping. We know that our task templates already have some values. We don't have to map a lot of those fields. We're gonna focus on the request detail template first. So we're gonna select the request detail template, which is this one. Now what you're looking at on the left-hand side are the actual prompt questions. And on the right-hand side are the available fields that you can map the answers to. Once you select your question and you select the field, you'll just click on map input to field and the values will show up at the bottom here. So the first question was, is this request for someone else? Well, we know that if they select myself or someone else, we want those keywords, myself and someone else, mapped to the description field. So we're gonna look for description and we're gonna click on map input to field. So now this question, the answer to this question will be mapped to the description field. Now, obviously, if they've picked someone else, we're asking them to select the individual. Well, this will be mapped to the client ID field. So we're gonna select that and map it here. So now if they select someone else, that name, that individual, will now be the name on the client ID. So the ticket will be in their name. The next question is, is this request for hardware or software? Well, this will be mapped to the description field as well. So we'll select description and map that one. The next question, please select the hardware that's needed. This will also be mapped to the description field. 
Next question, is this software for Mac or PC? Well, that will go to the description field. Please select the software that's needed. That'll go to the description field. Then the next question, please provide your cost center. That will go to the description as well. And then any additional comments will go to the description. So basically, we're mapping all of these answers to the description field. And one of the main reasons for that is because in our approval email, we want that description box to be in that email. And we want the approver to be able to see exactly what was asked uh, on this request. Another option to be made aware of is this checkbox where it says prefix the prompt question. This will allow you to put the question in front of the answer in a description field once it's mapped. So we're going to save this now. Now that we've saved it, we're going to map the task templates. We're going to return to the bottom and we're going to select the first task template we're going to map is the hardware task template for provisioning. So in here, the only fields we need to worry about is the individual, which will be mapped to the client ID. And then where it says, please select the hardware needed. We want that map to the configuration item field. Now this field by default is not on your task object. You'll just have to create it. It's a, it's a lookup field to the base element, which is pretty straightforward. Just create a lookup field, uh, call it configuration item. That's a lookup to the base element and add it to your layout. Then it'll be available here. We're going to map this one. Now the reason why we're mapping it here as well, we could map it to a description if we want, but for reporting purposes, it's great to have consistency. Uh, having it mapped to the configuration item field will help in the reporting purposes later on as well. And we're going to save this. We're now going to map the provisioning software. Same idea, the individual to the client ID and then the software needed to the configuration item field. And we'll save that. And we'll repeat those steps for the other two task templates. All right, I'm going to save this. So in theory, we should be done. We've created the prompt questions. Uh, we took care of the, the task templates. We've mapped everything. So we're going to save this one last time and we're going to go test it. We'll go back to self-service. We're going to refresh our self-service portal. And we're going to do two different tests. We're going to test the uh, hardware one first. So let's select someone else to make sure the mapping uh, gets done correctly. We'll select Bobby for the hardware. We're going to select CD-ROM 1. And we'll submit this one. Request 535. And we'll do a second one. This will be the software test. And we'll select someone different. We'll select Carol this time. This will be software. PC. And we're going to select Adobe for Windows. And submit this one. Record 536. So now we'll go to the Remedy Force console and verify that everything was mapped correctly. Alright, so we see both requests are listed here, so let's open up the first one. Alright, we see that the client ID is in Bobby's name, so that was done correctly. Category, impact, urgency, status, this is all part of the template which was applied. The queue is in the pending approval queue. Now we know we don't have an approval set up yet, but we wanted this to be in the pending approval queue. We have all the questions and the answers. So far, so good. 
Now we'll go to the details. We should see the one task template, which is here. It is open. This task template was generated again because there is no approval process uh, applied yet. Once we apply the approval process, this task won't get generated until the, the, the request is approved. But for now, we're just making sure that the fields on the task record are mapped correctly. So let's go ahead and open up the task. And we do have Bobby's name as a client. Uh, the category is hardware because this is the hardware request that we submitted. The description field is correct. It's basically uh, what we added in the template. If we scroll down, we mapped the value that was selected uh, to the configuration item field, which is right. And the queue should be set to the provisioning queue. So this task is correct. Now, in theory, if I close this task, the next task should be generated, which will be assigned to the different the other queue. So let's go ahead and close it. This is just to uh, complete our testing. All right, this task is closed. Now if we return to the service request, and if I was to reload the screen, you'll now see the second task was created. And this is the correct one, the hardware task. Let's go ahead and open that to make sure that it's assigned to the proper queue. And if we scroll down, it's assigned to the IT support queue. So, so far the process is working and we can test this again on the other uh, request that was submitted for software just to make sure that everything was mapped correctly. Again, we have Carol's name, so that was done right. Category, impact, urgency, this is all the way it was designed. The queue is pending approval and if we go to the detail, we should have the software template that's applied. And we're going to go ahead and open that template. We're going to close it and see uh, if the other template is created. All right, it's closed. And let's return to the service request. And we're going to reload this screen. And now we see that the other task was created as well. That's the correct one as well, the software one. So, so far what we've done uh, works fine. Again, our next step is to add the approval process uh, and the SLA.